So this time, I'll open up in the center. It's easy to get carried away in 960 playing on the sides. So now I, I need to, you know, I, I can't let him get on that diagonal first. And now I just feel like his rook is in kind of a silly place. So yeah, I, I mean, it's easy to get distracted and play for fianchettos and stuff like that in 960 just because it's so different. But you got to keep the basic principles in mind. You know, you just want to play for the center. So right now my, my pawns, super dynamic, you know, knight c6, and now I'm just pushing him back. If he plays, well, knight d4 is just going to lose that piece right now to c3. So I think Mashite is, he's kind of tired. He's dropping pieces here. But he's going to keep playing it out. So i got to figure out the fastest way to win. Would seem to be pretty straightforward. Just try to open up the center. And that should do the trick. So I'm going to reroute my knight right away. That e6 square, I mean, that's just, that's just too weak. So I absolutely have to just take advantage of that. All right, so I'll just, I'll take everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll just take it all. So here, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to play safe again. You know, I can't emphasize enough. When you get a sizable material advantage, you want to just you want to try to slow it down and take it easy if possible. So here, I'm going to play Bishop B5, and that's almost going to be mate. Just just about. Kick is a knight. I mean, the rook is not. The rook's not going anywhere. So I guess. Uh, I just keep bringing some more pieces in. I'm gonna try to trick him with bishop takes a6. So if queen takes e6, I have bishop c8 check. So actually this worked out pretty good because now the knight is, he still can't take it and uh, I can just keep playing around. So I think once I bring this other knight in to the attack, it shouldn't, I don't think it's gonna go on too much longer. Probably knight b6, bishop c8, no. Okay, I guess he had enough there. Well, he wants some more. Okay. I think I, after this game five times in a row, I think I'm going to stop <laughs> playing him. <laughs> uh, okay, so queen there, that's a good, that's a good move. I'm going to play c6. I'm going to do the same thing because it, it's eyeing that, uh, that h2 pawn. He's eyeing my h7 pawn. C6. I just played c6 because I, I want to, you know, establish play on the dark on the on the white squares here. So maybe I'm gonna play. Okay. Gotta play pawn takes. Such a weird position. There's no there's no flow. In the slightest here. Um, so I got. Could play b6. g6 is like the obvious move. Gotta get this dark square bishop out. 
his dark squared bishop. Just keep it simple. G6, bishop to F5. He'll probably play... I would imagine he'll play G4. That was a mistake. He should have played G4 because now my, my bishop is going to be a monster. So how to keep the bishop in? So I... Hmm. Instinct is telling me e5 is the move here. Maybe I want to prep it. He's got he's got g4. Which I don't really want. I don't, I don't really want him to play g4. E5 would, would mix it up at least. Maybe for now I just stop g4. Make it tougher for him to play this. H4, knight takes f5, queen takes h2. The knight on g3, I mean, what is it actually doing? My light square bishop is such a good piece. I just can't... I, I don't want to trade it, <laughs> but I'll just do it. Yeah, I mean, the bishop is just such a good piece. Knight on g3 and is blocking his bishop. Okay, so now it, I think should be able to snatch this guy. Snatch a pawn. Really, most importantly, I'm, I'm activating my queen. And now his bishop on h1 is, is going to have a pretty permanent problem trying to get in the game. So it's... It was a pretty cool combo. Now, pawn takes, you know, my rook on g8 opens. Yeah, okay, I figured, figured he might try that. Probably just the simplest answer. And, and now probably knight d7. Okay, I, I thought this might be an issue. Got to kick that knight. Yeah, the queen is just so well placed on h2 here. You know, even come back with queen to c7, for example. And um, what a weirdo move. I mean, what? I think I just have to play knight to c7. I mean, that was such a weird move, but it cut off my queen from coming back. And maybe he was trying to get his queen in with queen. Yeah, okay, he's, he's going to get some activity with his queen. But it makes me think... It's knight d7, right? I mean, the knight on a6 isn't going anywhere. And when I take it, I'm going to come back with queen c7, you know, no doubt. Yeah, I thought he might. So he's going to get the c file, which is just not good. It's not good that he's getting the c file. <laughs> uh huh. So, how I, I don't know if I can stop him anyway. Kind of think h3 is cool, but like really it's not. It's not cool at all. I'm going to be... Maybe I just take and... Alright, I've got a plan. It's not great. But I think it's good enough. Unless he plays knight, okay, he could have played knight b4. I was actually pretty worried about that. So now <laughs> my plan is pretty simple. It's queen back to b8, uh, probably bishop e7, f6, king f7, and rook c8. Challenge him for the c file. I'm up a pawn here, and not to mention his bishop on, on h1 is going to be s just so difficult to get that in the game. Okay, so now I really would agree to trades. If takes, king takes, queen a3, queen d6, or even king f6, but I, I think queen d6 offering the trade, and if he takes the a7 pawn, okay, none of that matter. He didn't do it. <laughs> uh, maybe just keeping it simple. And the a7 pawn, if he takes that, I'm going to get so much attack on his king. Now, that was an interesting idea. So I'm going to keep... 
I'm gonna pile up on that pawn now. He's probably gonna be trying to open up his bishop. I'm, I'm just gonna pile up on that pawn. So that's pretty pretty simple plan. It's queen a3, king f6. I'm getting pretty long time again, but again, it's so tough for him to get that bishop out of that h1. You know, effectively, I'll be up a piece as soon as I can activate my knight. Knight f6 seems to be the best. He's got this queen. Okay, he's just busting it open. So I feel like I should be winning easily after queen c7. If I can just trade some pieces, I'm up a pawn. Although as bishop, yeah, I, I think the knight on bishop in game here, I, I should be winning. To to be to be honest, I I feel like yeah. Although his king is really active, that's quite a concern. I'll do it. God, his king his king is so active. I mean, this this is not that easy to hold. But if g3, I play h3, this, this will be easy. If g3, I play h3 and, like, kick him out. Okay, so now I just got to push him back with those pawns and play king c7 at the right time. A h3 has got to be the move. This is actually not that easy of an endgame because we're equal on pawns. I kept thinking I was up a pawn. All right, that was a horrible move. We've got 40 seconds to teach some in-game technique. Should be enough time. F4 made absolutely no sense because he's down a piece now. And to activate that piece is not going to be that easy for him. I just got to make sure I don't give any, any stupid checks away and I've got nothing to worry about. So I'll go through it, go further check. I got to play quickly to get my king active. Can't believe he played F4. That was just ridiculous. Gotta get, I gotta get my pawns going. Okay, he's going in the center. Uh huh. Just a five. I, I gotta, I gotta make a march. Okay. And a five so, or b four. So yeah, I got thirty seconds. This shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, I let him out. Whew, he didn't see it. I'm going to win the bishop. Knight to g3. I'll win the bishop. I'm going to win it right now. So he's got to push the pawn. I snatch it. Knight takes f4. Just pre-move it. Pre-move. Cut off his king, it's important. Don't stalemate. And now just make a little mating net with the knight and pre-move the rest. Because his king can't move. Alright, looks like he, uh... Alright, so it was a nice little match. Chess 960 on Chess Cube today.